Hey, hello. We're back outside again today. It's Brady. It's Jeff. How you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time it might be where you are, or maybe, maybe you're even watching a recording. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're going to write a little bit of code today. In fact, we're going to write a little bit of code today on a Mac. So my guest today is, you, you got a really short chair there, dude. Uh, I have a really long torso. Okay. My guest today is Brady Gaster. Yeah, look at that. Kevin Griffin is welcoming us. Hello, hello. Kevin. Uh, Robert Tables is talking about the Mac hype. There's Ancient Coder. Good morning, everybody. Brandon Satrum, thanks so much for that kind cheer. 100 biddies for the Mac. We'll match that and make a donation to Black Girls Code this quarter. Thanks should, so much. I should show it more often. I'm good for your charity. Uh, a little bit, okay. <laughs> Lee says a Mac, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Dave. Dave Noterer is here. Org Brett, good morning. Oh my gosh, so many great friends there in the chat room. Thanks so much for joining us, pair programmers. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna dive back in. We've been having a great time working on the stream deck. Mm -hmm. I have indeed. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is actually pull it back down because I haven't updated in like an hour or two. Yeah, so it's probably got quite a few changes at this point. It's got a couple changes there. Uh, Hundred biddies from Robert Tables there with a pride cheer. Thanks so much, Robert Tables. We will match and make that donation to Black Girls Code. Off Zero Bobby, hey, hello, hello. Can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you keep a, a text file open there on the sides with some of these cheers so we can get our cheer graffiti in? I got it. So for every cheer that we have here on the channel, if you aren't familiar with this, you can see information down below about our Bits for Bytes promotion. So for every cheer that's 100 bits or more, we'll actually record that right in whatever piece of code we're working on so that you get recognition for supporting, mm -hmm. you know, the organizations and things that we're, we're promoting here on the channel. And we're going to put you into the, <laughs> into the top 10 list up at the top of the chat here that you see. Whoever finishes at the top of the list at the end of the month is going to get to come back and we will do a live pair programming stream with me. Uh, Moss was here in December, uh, beginning of January. And we had a great time with Elizabeth Schneider uh, writing some code together for the Oil Tank Vision Project. Uh, uh, Lannon BR, we, we have a couple ideas about what to talk about, and we got to get that on the schedule. He was our winner for December, so we'll see who, who we end up with. It looks like Off Zero Bobby is leading, heading into the end of January here. All right, how are we doing over there? I think I'm good. Off Zero um, Bobby. No, 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 it wasn't Off Zero Bobby. So we had both Robert Tables Robert and Tables. Brandon Satrum for okay. 100 apiece. Recently bought a stream deck. Looking forward to use everything made here. Thank you. Thank you to me and the community. Well, congratulations. Um, I'm going to say that terribly. Uh, EJGNZ. Thanks so much. Brady's audio is low. Brady's audio is low. Surprise. Surprise. I've still got, I've still got a little bit of the uh, rainbow beard going here. Look at this. Me? Yeah. So let's see what else is going on here. Uh, <laughs> flexing off zero, Bobby. Yeah, yeah. Hey, good morning, Welsh Ronaldo. So, um, how you doing? Did you pull? Did you pull in the stuff here? I am trying. I'm trying. I'm and it's it. it's Brendan Satrum. Satrum, spell it. Uh, S A T R O M. R O M. I got that right. There you uh, go. Sorry. There you go. Cool. We got it now. Um, not Brendan. Brandon. Brandon. Oh, I can't see. I'm With old. an O. There you go. There we go. B R A. D O. There you go. Ah, sorry. Fantastic. Sorry. Um, all right. What do you say we are you ready to take a look at some code? I am. I'm all trying. Right. I'm trying to actually get into the latest thing. I want to get check out uh, Dev. And we're we're here back in the treehouse today. Yep. Isn't in that the cool? Treehouse. There you go. There's Brandon smiling and laughing at us. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, spelling. We're pretty good at it. We're, uh oh, we are, am I running low okay. on batteries too? Okay. Oh goodness. <laughs> So I'm having a little bit of an issue finding what I had uh, pulled down. So I'm just going to pull it down from the main uh, place, from your main. The main repository. Let's yep. go over to the codes so that everybody can see what you're working on. That's fine. There we go. Or down there. There it is right above us. You love the dark theme, huh? I love the dark theme. Can you do me a favor and zoom a little bit? I can zoom a little bit. Here we go. I can. Uh, somehow I think Microsoft has no money to stream in 1080p. What? what? I'm not in 1080p? What are you talking about? So I had done this. So what I had been working on is in my own branch of this. I had actually started uh, working quite a bit on the Mac stuff, and I want to show you what I had done with it. I'm actually just going to open up where I uh, where I was. 
so let me go ahead and open up my code here. Okay. Because I'll be doing this in VS Code today just because I have a couple of things wired up. Okay. So I think I am broadcast. It does look like I am broadcasting in 720p. That's my on the road rig because I want to make sure that I do broadcast properly. We we do have a good network connection, mm -hmm. but we're running on a on a <laughs> we're on, running on a little Surface Book too. So yeah, 720p, but we want to make sure it's good quality coming out to you. Okay, All right, so, what do we got? So I was going to change themes uh, since I'm in the dark theme, and I know that, that tends to be No, dark little... theme is good. Dark sure? theme is okay. good. Okay, just cool. pump up the font size there a little uh, bit. Oh, what I can do there. Let me zoom in just a little. Uh, that'll, that'll affect us later. So I'm going to go ahead and open up source. And what I had done here is I, if I go into the sample plugin, um, and I know that PowerShell will run on a Mac um, and Linux and a lot of other places, um, and that's great. But I'm kind of a bash guy. And I know okay. that there are a lot of folks out there who, like me, are also bash people. Um, and it's, it's Mac bash, so it, you know, we don't have to know as many things in bash okay. as we need sure. to. But I opened up the PS1 and I went, oh no, like, this is, like, I, 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 I make the assumption that you're probably not going to want to install another shell. Um, sure. I would just go with bash. So what I've done is basically copy that file right here mm -hmm. um, and kind of emulate the, the file in Bash. And, and you know what I'm doing here is just writing out to the screen. I'm on a, on a pkill stream deck process, which took me a little while because I'm not used to processes having a space in their names. Oh. That was a little weird. Um, so if you look at this in the code, that is, that is very deliberate. OK, OK. And then I am using uh, the JQ extension for uh, my shell. Yeah, so we, uh, there's actually a couple comments in a pull request out there. That, that looks like are going to improve on a little bit of the script that you wrote. Good. That's even better. We yeah. could probably pull that in and just start from there if we wanted to. And actually, yeah, bashy goodness, Lee. Um, we, I actually have been talking to, um, to Tyler from the PowerShell team. He also streams here on Twitch. Um, we met up yesterday, and he's going to give us a little bit of help with the PowerShell scripts. Cool. Improve those, really bring some insight into them to make it more... PowerShell-y? Okay. Is that a thing? I mean, that's a thing. Okay. That's a thing. And then... To, uh, to, to, to give it a more PowerShell idiom. Yes. yes. And then if, it, if you do have PowerShell on your Mac, be able to run that properly over there and, and swap out some of the things that you rightfully pointed out, it's very Windows-y, that mm -hmm. PowerShell mm -hmm. script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. I mean, if you get started on Windows, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, we got to start building somewhere. Mm -hmm. We just want to give it to you so that it'll run anywhere. Hence the yes, core Yes, exactly. Um, exactly. But real, I think I might just start from there because I was kind of hacking at this and had a couple of days off of it. Okay. So what do you think? Where's that pull request? We want to merge that in? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's head, over, head back over to GitHub. Um, go up to the main project. There you go. Four PRs hanging out there. Four PRs. So uh, register plugin tidy up with from Derek, and it's got a red X on it. What happened there? What happened to this? Added one? liberal comments. Ooh. Okay. You want to take a look at why it failed? All checks have failed. Which <laughs> I'm not <laughs> dark much. Yes, it is dark. It is dark. Um, what do we have here? I'm not sure about the last time. I don't know what the Stream Deck software will run a DLL. No, it should not run a DLL from it. It shouldn't. Um, it seems it sh we should be compiling into an EXE. Because this compiles into a, uh, a DLL. What does? The, wh wh whenever I do a build of it, it actually compiles into a DLL. It does uh, it no, no, no. Uh, when you, it compiles into a DLL when you, so you can run it from the command line, mm. right when you're in debug mode. But when you when you build and deploy, it should um, it should publish as an exe, and then run. That might be what's wrong with my inner loop. There you go. Could be what's wrong. Um, I think we just want to start from this guy. So let's, let's merge this. What do you think? Sure, it's, go for it. It's got a little bit of a red X. Do we want to? Well, all right. Let's look at what the red X is. Right. So we wanna... have uh, integration here, um, and it look there's a yellow one there. There's one waiting. Um, so it removed the UUID, okay. Um, oh, he's doing a set on it instead. That's fine. This is nice. It's fine. I'll, I'll explain what he's doing here. This, this actually makes a lot of sense. So, so all right, hang on. Let, let's back up just a couple yeah, sure. seconds. We've sure. jumped in really far here. We've quick. jumped in far, yeah. <clears throat> so we're building, so this is a framework to help you build plugins for the Elgato Stream Deck. Mm -hmm. I have one here, you have one plugged in over there that you're working on. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, plugins can do all kinds of things, set up actions for the buttons that you can click, and you can customize these actions to do whatever you'd like. But there's 
uh, some idea of we'd like other actions that can do other things. Like I'd like to be able to control Discord from my Stream Deck, or maybe I'd like to be able to um, uh, uh, interact with my IoT devices, or maybe have something IFTTT, something from if this then that, mm -hmm. activate something on the Stream Deck, notify me, light up a button, maybe and then, or maybe I can push a button and it triggers something out at IFTTT. Can All I kinds of things. You, can I give you a real? Real world example? Sure, give me one. Cool, okay. So, in my team, we do, uh, I work on the SignalR team here at Microsoft. Yeah. And uh, the ASP.NET Core SignalR team. And we do triages every day. Because okay. SignalR is a pretty active project. And we have a lot of comments, issues, pull requests. Sure. Those kinds of things. Um, so, one of the things that we do is we have a couple different uh, URLs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a request here of the Elgato folks. So, I'm kind of an alt tab person. Yeah. And I've got the Stream Deck app open. And I'm alt tabbing here. And Oh, well, and it's not visible. Well, I'm sad because I can't do it. I actually mm. have to do that and go to it. So, okay. Elgato, if you're listening out there, I would love to have an alt tab placement. I don't. There's probably people out there who wouldn't want it, but I'd love it, to hear it'd why. It would be nice if that was a configuration option. That would be great. That'd be right? Great. That'd be great. So, so, so what I have up here, I also do a lot of, uh, of uh, videos. Okay. So, I do okay. a ton of videos to like show people how to use our code mm -hmm. and use our features and whatnot. So, what I've done is I've set up a couple different profiles. Uh, if I zoom in here, you'll see that I've got an iMovie profile. Mm. I've got an Ableton profile for when I'm making my music. Um, I've got a websites profile, which is what I'm going to talk about right now. So, I'm going to click that guy. Um, and what you'll see here is that I have a couple different icons. Okay. Uh, this is like I check news, like it's my job. Um, this will take me to the Azure portal. Okay. Um, this is actually a really cool button that will switch my profile in my browser. So, I've got a work profile where I'm logged in with all my work stuff and a personal profile where I'm not. Um, so, I push that and it's actually a multi-button command oh. where it will, it will do a, a hotkey, basically con, uh, command shift M mm -hmm. and then enter and it will open up another instance of my browser. Okay. So, and the real world part is uh, this is my personal Kanban board and all of these are different URLs that we use every day in our triage. And they're, so, they're the GitHub Octocats. They're the GitHub Octocats. <laughs> That's so exactly. Cool. And they're actually the Daft Punk GitHub Octocats, which makes it even better. So, we basically go into triage with my stream wow. deck and I just go, you go, wow. I go, wow. Okay. They went, wow. The devs went, wow. Sure. And I just push the button and the browser opens. It's fantastic. It's so. hot keys, hot bookmarks, live bookmarks. It's lovely. Physical ones. So, the idea is we're building ways that you can add in cool new things here. Mm -hmm. So, it might be cool it, it, instead of just being able to click that button and see triage, but what if you could see here's the number of open issues that need to be triaged mm -hmm. as a label on that button. Can you bring up the screen for the Stream Deck again sure so we can see that? Sure can. Right. So, where you've got, uh, change back over to that website profile. Sure. Right, so you've got, where you've got the two Octocats there in the middle, the three of them. It'd be cool if you could see, right, not only is it a button to take me to that triage, but if you could see, here's the number of items that need to be triaged. Right. That's a little bit more than what the Stream Deck can currently do. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. need to write a custom plugin, a custom action for that. So we've been building this toolkit that will enable you to do these things. And since it's built with .NET Core, you can be able to build and uh, work with it on both Windows and Mac. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. there's the, the quick intro, the 30 seconds, and all the cool things that we think would be amazing to build with this. Certainly, as a developer, as somebody who's technical, this is like, this is like candy. This is Christmas. Mm -hmm. Every right. time we figure out there's a cool new thing we can do, yeah. let's go wire that up. Oh my. And I'm just so happy to be able right. to do cool things. I mean, there's like four or five cool ideas like on the board right now. Oh, like, gosh, yes. Like, you know, uh, uh, Janiscu7, I hope I'm saying that properly, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, the Signal on Stream Deck with me. That's something we've talked about ad nauseum. Um, little games that you can play that games, communicate yeah. back. Oh, yes. Tons of stuff, tons of stuff. Um, is the Stream Deck easy enough to be an offshore purchase so my wife doesn't find out I bought it? Yeah, it's yeah. like 130 US, 160 yeah. US. Yeah. You can, you, you can find it on sale every now and again on, on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Moment before the stream uh, started, you were shoveling snow. Uh, I think Janescu is actually in Finland. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. And we, I, I don't think we met at uh, IglooConf, which is unfortunate. I don't know if, if mm. Janescu 7 was actually in, in person at the uh, conference. Uh, mm. Thanks again to the, to the Finns for bringing, bringing me out. Oh, fun. yeah. That was very cool. It was cool. All right. So, let's look at the, the final updates that they had here. This is for the Bash script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this is the one that we want to run on a Mac. Right. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, what I had done up here, now, I use this awesome CLI tool called the Azure CLI because I do a lot of Azure stuff. Sure. It's, it's a cool, pretty cool product. 
Um, and uh, it puts a dependency on called JQ, which effectively, uh, for everybody who's a .NET person, is like Newton soft JSON, but on the command line for Bash. So I can actually oh. query JSON documents, format JSON documents, and do all kinds of stuff with JSON documents using JQ. Okay. But JQ is an extension. So I think this pull request, I think the etymology of this pull request is like, you know, keep it pure. Let's not require pure. additional yeah. features. So I, I, I applaud that. Do you have an applause button? Uh, oh yeah, we got an applause button. Here we go. I can, I can find that. I got something. I, yeah, that's good. It, but this, right, we, our, our job is to help build and make developer tools easy for folks to use. And there's, there's principles, there's ethics that we have around some of these things mm -hmm. where we want it to be drop dead simple for somebody to get started. So that's why we're working on things like, like a template so that you can say .NET new plugin and you get a completely working plugin mm -hmm. that you can use in Visual Studio Code. You can use, you can use in Vim if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And at the command line, .NET build, and now you have a plugin. Awesome. I'm doing it. You're doing it. I'm doing Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Go for it. I'm going. For it. That looks fine to me. So using said to lift out that that uh, UUID, this is a feature that the Stream Deck wants us to have. It's a way to identify your plugin with this universal, unique identifier. So now we're in dev. So I'm just yep. going to re-pull from dev. I'm going to start over. Over into your private repository. I'm actually just going to. You're yeah. going to you're going to clone directly from there. Yeah, I'm going to do a git clone. All right. And this then we, uh, stream. While that's cloning, can you pump up the deck. font size in your term? Oh yeah. I know! I know! I'm sorry, I squint. It's, it's a thing. There we go. Uh, Lee says, JQ's going on your find out about list. Uh, sounds like a great idea. It does, it does. Uh, so I'll open this guy up in code. Um, Look at that, off zero Bobby with a, with a link and a curl command to go get some information. Nice! Nice! Fantabulous! Where's the... Di but. Oof. Woo! That's, that's, that's good. All right. Considering I'm from North Carolina, that's where he's from. That's where he's from. Good stuff. Uh, okay, so I'm going back it. in the Stream Deck right. plugin, and now we will go to the uh, drastically new and improved shut file. So the sample plugin in Oops. the source oh. folder. This is our canonical example. This is this is a uh, counter that you can just press the button on the device and it counts up. It just, big deal, but. It's our simple example that we're going to use to extract our template from, mm -hmm. right? If this works, we should be able to take, if, if the sample plugin project works, we should be able to take its contents and templatify? Templatize. Templatize it. Yeah. Okay, I now get it. Now we know. That's not crazy. <laughs> not at all. Uh, okay. All right, so let me see. Holy if, crow, look at all those requirements. So let me see if this is still here. Now, what I'm wondering about is that when I had, in my old uh, fork of the repo, I had a file or, or a uh, call and sample plugin that would run, you know, like on, on the build, it would basically figure out if I was on Windows, it would run the, uh, the PowerShell script. If right. I was not on Windows, it would run the shut. Right. Uh, a little bit of a target manipulation. Exactly. There. But as I look here, I see that that is no longer. Oh, it somehow got dropped. That's That's been dropped. So okay. There, that's, so the build changes are not in there so That's So that's a little unfortunate. So, oh, oh should man. I do a build? Is that what I want to do? Well, well that, that won't put it in, like, no. automatically. No, 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 no. Okay, well, let me back up again. A string. You've modified the emulator handle OSX as well. Hmm. Okay, so what I would do Yes, yeah, somewhere here, we lost the build action. That's okay, we can grab that. I've got that in my old fork. Okay. Um, so, it, the CS project file that, that you see Brady navigating through here, right, this is all the instructions oh. that .NET needs in order to build to, to build an EXE out of this, it's right? An executable file. That's not in mine either. What did you do, man? I have no idea. That's uh, extremely unfortunate. We're going to have to go lift it from, from the repository or something. Yeah, so inside here, not only does it say, here's all the content that goes along with the EXE, things like our images that, that are going to show up on the buttons, but there's also different tasks that we can tell .NET to execute as part of the build process. Mm -hmm. So you can say, before the build, or it's labeled as pre-build, do these t tasks, execute a script, different things like that. What we want to happen is when you're in debug mode, we want, after you're done building, stop the Stream Deck app, and that's that shell script you saw Brady working on. Mm -hmm. uh, copy over the published executable for our Stream Deck, 
uh, and then restart the Stream Deck application mm -hmm. so that it picks up that plugin and is now visible and we can debug and use that on the device. There we go. So that, that loop, we call that the inner loop here at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. the, the, the process of going from debug my code, F5, start, and everything to the point that the debugger is attached and we can step through and start looking at things. Can we talk about what the outer loop is? So what's the outer loop? Why don't you explain that to our friends? Uh, so the way it's been described to me is the outer loop is effectively everything that happens once you commit your code. Okay. So it's like your DevOps build, it's your publishing experience, yada, yada, it's your you know, diagnostics gathering experience and so forth and so on. Because it can be done exactly how I want it. It will be. Mm -hmm. The only question is, mm -hmm. are you the man to do it? Darn skippy I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I love how you censor yourself. It's great. Well, I have to. That's this, fantastic. We, we, we want this to be a welcoming environment. Anybody can come in and join us. Like DNet78. Good afternoon, DNet. Good to see you. Cool. All right, so as Jeff was describing earlier. There it is. There's the target. Yeah, Thank I, you. I grabbed it while you were chatting. Um, so here's, it's good. It's fine. Okay. Um, Eagles fans, what are you going to do? Uh, so I've got the post. I'm sorry to bring up old stuff. Oh, you're killing me here, Smalls. You're uh, killing me. So if you look at the post build. Yes. I thought I was going to see a sound. Or hear sound. Oh, I can play a sound. That's okay. Um, I'm going to look at the post build. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for an end. And then, and then we're going to, if it's Windows, so you see here, if we've got an equals. Well, hang on. How about what's the attributes up top there? What's this attribute? Right. So oh, it's okay. after okay. targets, okay. after the so, post build. So after the post build. So basically, it'll build, and then the post build event fires. And then? And then this guy will run. Conditionally, if it's debug configuration. If it's debug. If right. we're in release, I don't care. Don't right. try to attach right. the debugger exactly. and deploy. Do you want to explain why? And then? I don't want it to run this when I'm building on Azure DevOps, when I'm building for that release configuration that I'm going to send out. Because it's not, because Azure, DevOp, Azure DevOps is not going to be connected to a stream deck. Correct. So we don't need to kill it. And then. Okay, cool. All right. And then it figures out, are we Windows? If we're Windows, we're on PowerShell. And then we're probably going to update this after we get this more uh, idiomatic to the PowerShell love. Right. We're going to, we'll have Tyler join it. So Tyler's going to join us the first week of February, and, and we'll, we'll do some PowerShell love around this to make sure that we have a great experience for building mm -hmm. and deploying. Now, mm -hmm. now when Tyler's here, uh oh, I'm wondering, Yes. Would Tyler do the uh, the same level of respectfulness that our uh, pull requester did, and factor in whether or not I've got PowerShell installed? Like, could he figure out do I have PowerShell installed, and if not, run the Bash script? I don't know. That's a really good question. If he could do that, here's 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 the deal. If he can do that, I will be the guinea pig to install PowerShell. Uh -huh. We'll do a before and after on my Mac. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Throw me a freaking bone here. And we'll see if it works. We'll see if it works. Okay. All right. So, so you'll see here's equals PowerShell. Yeah. Equals Windows. Bang equals. Otherwise go to Bash. Otherwise go to Bash. Makes and sense. And that's pretty much easy. So we get to stay on. Officer Bobby's asking for the GitHub for the project. You know what? I should have put that in our project command. I will load that up. I bet you have a button for it. I don't. I. I. Who knew? Um, Jeff and Brady are working on uh, Stream Deck Toolkit, and it's at uh, HTTPS, GitHub, com, Fritz and Friends, right? Mm -hmm. And then Stream Deck Toolkit. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to chat there. So now the project command is set up in the bot, so if you, when folks come along a little bit later, we can just execute the project command and it'll spit out that information. But off zero, Bobby, there's the, the GitHub for this. All right, mm -hmm. so that's that should be wired up. Is it going to build the plugin now when we compile? Let's figure this out. All right, and the way look. we can figure this out is I'm going to minimize my window here. Uh, I'm going to shrink this window, and you're going to tell me if we have other names that I need to add here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. As you've figured out, you're going to have to spell them as well. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do here is pull this up, and all I'm going to do is put this right over here. So the Stream Deck app is running. Can we see it over here on the side? It's kind of so in the foreground. Mm -hmm. You can see it in the foreground. Now, I'm going to do a command shift B, which is going to pull up my build command, which we'll see up here. Okay. Um, and that's actually going to read from my, I think it's the tasks.json file in my yes. VS Code. So, yeah, VS Code has that tasks yep. thing around your project. So, okay. if I were to expand this guy, you'll see here's our tasks and our launch. So, mm. we'll see that okay. the task is really just going to do my build. 
launch would be if I wanted to debug it. So uh, let me do that one more time since it hit itself. So I'll do a build here, and yep. now we're going to see the .NET build open. And is the app going to close? See that? Yes. Good. That's good. Now is it okay? So is it going to reopen? No, it doesn't. I don't know if it reopens. I don't think it. Well, reopens. it should reopen. No reopen. All right, we need it to reopen. Hey, it sounds like I have some work to do. Just yeah. Go. Let's get to it. Uh, Auth Zero Bobby, uh, did your first stream the week after pretty much w reading my blog post. That's terrific. Congratulations. Um, big congratulations to you. Uh, let us know when you're streaming, if, and uh, let's put a shout out out there to Auth Zero Bobby. Now, does somebody want to tell me how to start a process in Bash? How do you start a process in Bash? I don't. Well, that well it's not just it. start a process, because if you start a process, Right here, right there. Um, yeah, look, it's right there. Um, you don't want it to just start from inside the script because when that right. exit hits, it'll close it down because it's a child process. You need to fork and start a process. Oh, wow. This right? is getting interesting. This is trippy. Right? So, we... yeah, you're right. I don't know Bash well enough to be able to say, oh, this gosh. is what you do. Do we have any pair programmers in the chat room yeah, with a we. good suggestion on that? We could live share. Live share. We could we could live share to who? Uh, whoever tells us. To whoever tells us. We says, uh, thank you, Ancient Coder. Uh, my app and Echo. My app and Echo. Uh, use and to fork. Oh oh, use the uh, amp ampersand to fork. That'll work. The ampersand like this? No. No no, that's a dollar, dude. Shut up. Yeah, that, that, that jammy. So what are they saying? My app and... My app and Echo. Yeah, my, so do my app, end it with the ampersand. Right, that's how to throw it to the background. So it would just end. be like this. Right, so you want to call Stream Deck, well, your Stream Deck app. Is that how, that's not how you call it, is it? Well, I did peak kill up here. That's what I'm wondering, is how to start it. Well, no, you need to find the actual application where it is on disk and execute it, right? That's how the PowerShell folks are doing. The, the PowerShell uh, shell. I don't know if I need to, because what I could do is just... Can you run it on... Actually do this. And the Echo will give you the PID. Oh, the process ID. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, friends, in the chat room. Uh, Draga and, no. and Lee. Very cool. That's not going to work. No, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. I don't know how to do it. So, so this takes like a second or two to launch mm -hmm. those sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see this. Latency on sounds is bad. Latency on sounds is yes. very bad. Yes. It makes me feel bad. Anyways, um, what about, uh, wouldn't it be command to run a string? You're thinking Windows, Hugo. Um, what about, uh, so where, what's the name of the Stream Deck app? So launch okay. the stream, well you have it sitting right there down on your on It's, your it's called bar. Stream Deck. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but like look at the properties of the thing you have on the dock. And see where it lives, so you can execute it. The thing I have. There we go. Carrie Payette with a hundred cheer. Thank you so much for those biddies. Can we spell this? For those bits. Uh, C Payette. C Pay E T T E. C Pay E T T E. C Payette. There you go. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Uh, so I I can end then. I could end then. You could end then. We're looking here. <clears throat> but that's not the. So go down. Mouse over the app down there in the in the dock. In the dock. Right? Right. You have it down there in your launcher. Right? Shouldn't it show you where it runs? Go, it's click a, show it's, in it's Finder. In, it's in applications. Yeah. Okay. It's in applications. So show, show in, in Finder, Finder. Right? But you should be able to get like the Unix command line to it. Uh, to launch an app is app name dot app. You need to do open app name dot app is what Hugo is suggesting. Open app name dot app. Let's try that. All right. So just like, just like the, let me actually close it. Dang it. See, there we go again. It's long. Please, oh God, don't please. So open, open Stream Deck. And what did he say? The, the app. app. So he's actually saying slash applications slash Stream Deck oh. dot app, no space. Uh, like this. I think. Keep uh, no space in between stream and deck, and then dot app inside the quotes. Oh. Um, you need a slash in the front. I do. 
That's that's what it looks like. Yeah, Hugo saying we need the opening slash. Uh, no. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. You do? Oh! <laughs> the backslash space. Whoa. Okay. So let's copy that. Wash it off. Wash it off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! That's right. That's good. I like that. All right. All right. So, so now we're doing... So let's put that in here. Yep. Open. And we need to put it with the, uh, with the yeah. amper at the end. I did this the other day and it was a little wonk. Applications. Don't forget the slash in the front. Raw 415. I think it was nice. Yeah. Like that. Uh, you need the slash in front of applications. Oh, yeah. Pardon. Right, right between... between uh, you think I don't do this often. Yeah. Right. We don't write script, typically. We're writing... So, like script. that? Uh, yeah, let's give that a shot. Everybody feel good about that one? I am I, I am feeling good now. So let me so let me open the stream deck now that I know how to do it from the command line. Yeah. That's like a new thing for me. Um, we'll go to here. Uh, and I just want to minimize this so we can see what see if we're successful here. Uh, pull this guy over. All right. And now we'll do a control shift B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we need the PID off zero, Bobby. I don't no. think we do. So there's the build. Did it close it? There it goes. It went away. And it reopened. Fantastic. Ship it. Beautiful. Right? I'm committing. Commit it. Uh, got the inner loop. Better. I drink and I know things. <laughs> well, now we know things. Push. Now, wait, you're pushing right into the organization. I'm pushing into depth. Yeah, thank you, Hugo Dahl. Sorry, guys. Yeah, why don't you put making a PR here, dude? We're working directly on the thing. I will next time. That's right. <laughs> Darn skippy. Let me do this. I'll, I'll make a new branch. Uh, uh, what should I call it? On the show. Okay. Sure. Branch. Trying to figure out. Trying Mac. to figure out another sound effect to queue up. Mac inner loop. Boink. Okay. Now we're on the uh, inner loop. Yeah. Right. Okay. So pushing directly into the organization repository. It's illegal in nine countries. So don't do it. I understand. Okay. I've been told this by Thank Jeff you. Wilcox numerous times. All right. So, all right, so we have for the Mac, it now builds and properly starts and stops the Stream Deck app. Thanks to the audience. Thanks to, thanks to Hugo, mm -hmm. with the thanks taking about, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are the humblest. Oh, there you go. Spilos, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that works. Can you, so is it deploying the plugin to the appropriate folder? Good Where's question. Where's the plugins folder on the Mac? This is a wonderful question. All right, so I'm going to zoom in a bit here because this gets a little deep. Uh, that took a little bit of searching. Okay, so what I'll do in this case is I'm just going to go to. Uh, I'm actually going to do it the way I the way I always do. Uh, I'm going to go to my command line and just uh, cd uh, here. Uh, and Hugo, you're right. It'll only work if the Stream Deck app is in slash application. Yep. Slash applications. If exactly. it's moved somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So if I can see if I can remember where all this is. So I believe it is. Oh, I got. You have to show your hidden files. Okay. It's because you have to go into library. So it's in library and then application support. Okay. And then com dot elgato dot stream deck. Dot stream deck. Oh wow. And then uh, there's plugins. plugins. Okay. And what you'll see here there you go. is that we've got, oh, it's shrunk. Uh, let me, it's doing this weird thing. If I expand this guy, okay. you'll see there's the C sharp fritz and there's the analog clock, which is one that I've actually, that's one that is That's one that you installed from the store. So what I'll do nice. here is I'll just do a shift delete on this and we'll kill it. Make sure it redeploys. Uh, make sure it redeploys. And I want to see if my stream deck is running. Okay. So you see, I do this every time. The, the inner loop on building the inner loop is always hard in any right. product. But once we've got it, it's going to be amazing. It. Yeah. So it's, <coughs> it's, it's, it's a good place for OCD folks like yeah. myself. Uh, Raw 415, so. thanks so much for the follow. I okay. appreciate so you joining us. I'll go into uh, source and then CD stream deck, stream deck dev. Uh, I'm going to do a quick thing here. Um, Pump up that font size. Just oh, yeah. Sorry. Smidge. This one? Even this one? Yeah, even can this zoom one. in on this one. Not, this, not screen zoom, man. No, no, no font, size. font size. So really all I want to do is here do a build. Yes. So I'll just do a build. Right. Okay. And cross our fingers. So, and this is the same C sharp that you've seen me building here on the on Windows. Fantastic. So it opened. Now, uh, is it when we go into the actions on the right side? Is the plug in there? Oh well, it'll be in the Finder. Okay. 
It's not there. Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, no, no. It's not there. So if I go to the finder, it didn't, didn't put it It didn't there. copy. It didn't, it didn't deploy it. it. There. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so that's, that step is getting uh, missed. I think, uh, I think you got a friend there in the chat room. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> that's my boy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my voice. Uh, they logged in and said, hey. <laughs> Good <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> Don't embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> uh, we, we, we got them a switch last night. They're extremely excited. Oh, man. So they're happy. <clears throat> so, um, at, at Hunter. Uh, suggestion. So I don't see anything else going on. Are you actually are you actually deploying? No, it doesn't. Oh no, there's your there's your copy to it the does. plugin directory. So where did it actually? That's is, well, hang on. Is it in bin netcore bin debug netcore app two too? Did it? Oh, it looks like it. That's weird. That's getting put there. Plugin directory library blah 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 blah. It should be getting put there. That's right, that's where it should be deploying. But do you, right, let's make sure that <coughs> the copy statement that you had down there further on 29 is trying to reach into our bin debug folder, <coughs> grab the stuff that we compiled, and deploy. Look at that, a cheer from Carrie Payette for your son. Oh, cool. Nice. That's very cool. Welcome, yeah. Cool. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's navigate to the, your oh, yeah, folder here and see if. Let's see here. Right, see if it's in the bin debug folder. Debug, yeah. It's in there. Okay, so it has something there. Is it in its Netcore app two two? Yep. So it should be copying all that stuff out should and be. taking it over to the plugin directory. Mm-hmm. What is the plugin directory? Let me do this real quick. Let me do this. I go. Uh, we'll just do. I'll put a line so we know where it is. When we look at the build. Uh, echo, echo, echo. And I'll open this and do a build one more time. And we'll look for the line. There we go. It's so, not getting set. Okay, so it's not picking up the plugins. It's folder. not getting. It's not. It's not getting <clears> set. Yeah. Okay. So the, it looks like what we should have happen. The plugin name. It's getting echoed into here. From that said statement. From that said statement. Uh, UUID. So I'm gonna do this as well. I'll do an echo. On the UUID. Uh, UUID. Debugging shell scripts. Coming up next oh, boy. here on Fritz and Friends. Never thought you'd see that on a .NET show, huh? Never. See, that's the cool thing about .NET Core. Got to mess with we're, everything. We're messing with and we're getting into all kinds of things. Got that it. New world. It's a brand new world. No, okay, don't, so you don't want Fritz singing. Okay, so here's this. So we got the UUID. <clears throat> all right, so it's properly being grabbed. Good. And then the plugin directory name. Uh, now, now we have to, have to back up. Apologies. I'm kind of wondering now. So, Lee, I agree, Lee. Windows subsystem for Linux for the win. That's WSL. Yes. But uh, Brady's hardcore on his uh, MacBook Pro here. Touch bar and everything. Uh, I don't use touch bar. Touch bar is like, is like a screen oh, down. Oh, look at this. Look at this. So, we what, have, what we have an error. Yeah? What? Uh, so, C sharp plugin action, line 18, that command not found. So, it's like it's trying to. So the echo, <clears throat> it's echoing this guy. This is not found. So something weird is happening. So that here. said statement isn't. Hmm. That is a little So weird. this is this is the Unixy part that goes a little bit off the deep end for me. Exactly. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, uh, Drega, if you helped out with with this pull request. What do you th think here? Because it's not right. It's not picking up that. That plugin name, it's not building it. Hmm. Okay, so the app starts and stops, mm -hmm. uh, killing the Stream Deck process, installing the plugin, right? Usage Maker, and right, it's it's throwing that make directory, done installing, but it didn't actually make the directory. Yep. So we echoed here, and we echoed here, and this is right. I do know that that is right. And then it looks like what we're trying to do here just isn't working. So um, something's happening like kind of over here, um, at least when we try to pipe it to use it in mm -hmm, some way. Mm -hmm. That's a little unfortunate. I'm um, kind of wondering if we just do a set. So if I just set it here, pardon the silliness. Uh, Jeff, uh, echo, sorry, uh, Jeff, mm -hmm. Jeff. And we'll see if we get it here. Okay. 
Uh, so one, yeah, one, two, and it blows up there. So it's blowing up when we try well, to. You, you, you have it. Oh, I see, I see. So I want to do echo here. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. I'm trying to line emulate 20, this. Line to... 20, you didn't write echo, you wrote ek p. Oh, shoot. My bad. We're going too fast. Yeah, typo. Absolutely, Lee. Hush. What'd you do? You didn't type it right. That's what you did. Interesting. Yeah, something something is getting cut. I think his, I think what's happening is this said is basically trimming the entire line. That's what's happening. Okay. Um, that so is what's the dollar what's suffix? That's this. That's, he's got this dot action right here. Okay. See here? He's, that's actually a variable that he's got set. Okay. Suffix is this dot action he wants to get rid of. It's unfortunate. I got stuck on this the other day, and I worked through it by using JQ. <laughs> so... Um, all right, I'm putting this in front of me here. Um, wait, you merged this. What? This is register plugin and start stream deck shell, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking in the. Oh, I'm in master. My bad. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what I had done over on my uh, fork of this. Oh, uh, and that would be. Them's fighting words. Uh oh. Need to put them fingers on a diet. Oh, man. Put what? Uh, look at your output. You have an error on line four of the script, is what uh, JT Sam is saying. I do. Scroll down a little. Hang on, hang on. You're in, that's the build. Scroll down a bit. In your. In my file? In your, uh, no, no, not in the file, in the terminal. Scroll in down. The terminal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Now it's behind us. Line four. Bad substitution. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. There's a substitution trying to happen that is not. Right. Plugin name SD plugin. Well, it doesn't have the plugin name yet, does it? Dollar plugin name SD plugin. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have that yet. That is correct. Right. Um, do you run into an issue with the Stream Deck app crashing either when you lock your machine or screen server f screen saver fires up? No, I do not. In fact, the screen saver or when I lock my machine actually locks the screen of the of the Stream Deck. It sh brings up the Elgato logo, and you you can't do anything. It, it blocks it from interacting. Here we go. Here we go. So the plugin name, right? Plugin name dot sd plugin. There we go. That well, this 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 was below this. So this right the dot sd plugin inside that substitution needs to move outside. That's the extension. That's the end of that folder name. That needs to move out. The dot sd plugin. Yeah, need to move that outside the curly brace. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, when you log back in, the app running the desktop has cr running on the desktop has crashed. I haven't seen that. There. It says done installing. All right. Let's see here. To a bad operator expected. And, and all that copy and make direct make directory stuff that was erroring out right there in the terminal above my noggin, that disappeared. So let's go back over to your finder and That's see if it's there. there. Not there. And they're still blowing up somewhere on line 31. Still blowing up here. Binary up up binary operator expected. What? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? No, we don't. We don't. We, we have we, uh, no. Hmm. This is like mob programming over the internet. It is off zero, Bobby. It mm -hmm. is cool. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to figure out what's missing here. So line thirty one is where? Well, it's after the plugin directory. Line thirty one is if plugin directory exists, mm -hmm. then remove it. Mm -hmm. um, and then make it. Binary operator expected. If dash D plugin dir. Plugin dir should be in quotes is what Hugo is suggesting. Right here? The dollar, the dollar plugin dir. No, 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 no. Move the quotes outside the dollar. And then after the last curly brace. So that it, it actually does that. I don't need help. Yes, good. Not on this. And, the, and, the, and here as well? I'm thinking yes. 
Does that seem weird to you? That it does it at the, it doubles it at the end? Watch it this does. behavior. Visual Studio Code. Well, it's trying to be friendly. It's trying to be friendly, but it only tries to be friendly at the end. Hmm. And then should that semi be, in, I think the semi should be outside the quotes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too helpful. Too helpful. All right. Fire it again. Let's see what we get. Oh. And, oh, that looks ugly. Resource file could not be found. Ooh, now we're, now we're going somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. You think so? No. Oh, geez. I don't think that's it. Well, hang on. What are the errors here? Um, that's an error during the build. Star Star Resdex. When the heck, where the heck did that come from? Dude? Ugh. When did we get a I thought, thought it was 2.2, two, not, uh, not core 3. It is not core 3. But we're using, uh, you have the core 3 SDK. Um, Do we have a global file? A global JSON? Uh, oh. What do we got? 3.0 preview. So I make a new one? Yeah, let's put a global file out there. So the global file for .NET Core is a way for you to specify, to kind of force a version of the software development kit onto, onto the project. And we don't want to use the preview version of the SDK, the .NET SDK. We want to use the 2.2 version because that's a version that's currently supported oh. and available out there. What Oops. are you doing, man? Just checking. Okay. My bad. Cool. So, right, what you saw when, very quickly there, Brady ran .NET slash version, dash dash version, and it said, oh, we're using 2.2, uh, the 2.2 SDK. Still have a ResX, which is a little... That's weird, because we're not referring to a ResX. I know. So, where's that coming from? That, you didn't touch the project file. I didn't touch. I mean, I edited this. That was all I did, though. Yeah. Any ResX is in here? No. No. So that's strange. Is it this? No, that's fine. Okay. That didn't change. Okay. I've not seen that before. So 22100 error, resource file, star star res x. Uh, it shouldn't be looking for that at all. It shouldn't be. It's extremely weird. Yes, very. I don't get that. Hmm. Um, okay, why are we getting a res x? Uh, scroll up a little bit. Let's see what else is going on in there. Um, it's nice to be cutting edge, but not for, yeah, this is something that's generally available. We don't want to be experimenting right. with .NET Core 3 as part of this development. No, we don't. Um, that is definitely no. But it, and we didn't have that with the double quotes. You're not even getting there. You're still building. Yeah. You're not even executing your script yet. That's bizarre. That's bizarre. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with flying fit. Yeah, let's. Um, but you're not even getting there, dude. I don't care. Oh, fine. Repress. That's the only thing that we changed fine. Okay, now it's super broken. <laughs> That makes no sense. We didn't change anything. I know. You're about to get a serious beat. You are. Git stash, git clean, dfx, git stash, pop. Uh, run a git status. Let's see what changed. Hang on. <gasps> What did it do? Do you see what it did? I see what it did. Check this out. What did it do? Look at this. I'm looking. I close all this. Close all those things. What did you do? Where the heck did that come from? Put it there. Put it there. <gasps> we moved it to the wrong folder. We moved it to the wrong folder. Ah. This is trippy. Now what do we do? Now build. 
It didn't move it to slash all that stuff, right? I think that I think it just went from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did I do this? Buttons in support. Thank you, Smafa. I appreciate that subscription. And uh, four months in a row. Thank you so much. You're in a red mug now. Thank you for being a subscriber here. You're going to get the .NET bot emote. And we're going to make a matching donation to Black Girls Code this quarter. You can learn more information about Black Girls Code. That's our charity. We're supporting this quarter just below us here on the wall on Twitch. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, right, Lee? It's like, oh, come on. Okay, so this is the... Let me do this. New setup. Not a new setup. We're at we're at Channel 9 Studios at Microsoft today. Okay. I think what it is. Please. Help is me out here. That we don't. This is going to sound weird, but I think what it is is that we don't need these. Which seems, seems weird. I'll give you that. Okay. But when I had done this before. Yeah. I had, I had ended up needing to actually include it on every single thing. It's like setting it to a variable was causing me pain. Okay. Which I know sounds... So we need to wrap... Uh, I'm, I'm agreeing with... Oh my gosh, is that Legrand? Wow. See, if you look I, at... I'm, I'm having a hard time pronouncing our, our it chatter's name. Uh, but we need to wrap the dollar plug in dir in the quotes when we make dir. Need to wrap the dollar plug in dir in quotes when we, I swear I tried that too. This is the only thing. If you see, I'm on screen here. The only yeah. thing that ever worked was scroll down a little so we can see that. Yeah, was me actually on it. There you was go. me actually <clears throat> using pathing out the entire thing every single time. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know why. Um, I don't know if it was because I was doing bash instead of source or yep. what. But um, yeah, that's that's what I had to do. Okay. So, let me let me do this just for giggles. Um, where, wherever I've got plugin dir mentioned, yeah, I'm just and we all hate this. We all hate this. Um, and of course, it's going to now do that. Yeah, we want to get past this and get into writing some. I'm with, you. I'm with you. I, I I know. I know. I know. It happens. It happens. Uh, believe me, I had this pain the other day. So if I paste that there, and then I paste this here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The inner loop's hard, dude. Um, and I'll paste this guy here. And I'll 86 this echo, and I'll 86 this echo. Oh, no, no, we need the copy. Need that copy right there. I'm just curious if that'll fix it. OK. Instead we'll, of carrying around the variable, yeah, actually. Instead of carrying around the variable. Everywhere. I hate it. It's a script, but. OK. Yeah, that's not good. And then we have that ResX issue again. Well, and if is it because you have? I think it's that path. Yeah, let's 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 try his suggestion or their suggestion, uh, which was um, up here. Yeah. We have that in quotes, and then he's got these in quotes everywhere else. Um, Is it you or there's there. some audio problems? Now our our audio was looking good. How are we doing over there, Golnaz? Are we okay on audio? And then here we go here. Sometimes Every the mic's crackling against clothes. I think we're all right, right? We're okay. Is Some my, audio drops. It might be. Sorry. Uh, okay, so let me try that. We may switch to your, yeah. I don't know what's, I don't, I don't know what's going on. That's very uh, frustrating. I apologize. Uh, as I, I quoted it, as you can see here, heard yeah. the suggestion. Yeah. And we're still having the same, Still having the same issue. Uh, this was an issue that I literally ran into the other day for this blocked me for hours. Okay. So I don't want to block us for hours here. I want to continue on yeah. talking about code here. Yeah. Um, but uh, this, I was stuck on this for quite some time uh, the other day because uh, it literally this this space for what it messes us up. Okay. In this string, so <clears throat> I am not entirely sure how to resolve it um, at this point. Uh, you know what? Go back to your previous script. Roll think, it back. We, so? We've spent a half hour, 45 minutes on this. Go back. You think? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and that was this guy? Just copy it in. And we'll, we'll go back and figure it out later. Okay. So it's, let's do it, this. It's not behaving, um, and your script was working. And the one thing I want to do here. We want to make sure we, we put that relaunch script back yeah. in. Yeah. So I'll do this guy. Oh, man. Take the exit out. It's not, um, so 
Those are build failures, but they're build failures because it's not copying and deploying into the right, right. place. Right, It's just copying like into itself, yeah. essentially. It's copying like into the project. So we need, you need to go back into the folder and we need to remove that. Yep. So I'll open up my guy here. Yeah, yeah. Simple plugin. Okay, it's not in there. So it, it didn't do it. We didn't get that far. Okay. So that's good news. Um, I'll do a build here and maybe we'll get lucky this time. Let's see. That's so weird. No, we're hitting the ResX again. I, I, I don't get it. You had that working. So yeah. is it, well wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There it was. Go back open the sample plugin. You saw it. It was right there. That <gasps> we don't need to clean the directory. Look at that tilde there, right? It copied into local folder tilde all this stuff. It's not expanding and doing the pathing properly. It's not. So with that, with the previous syntax, and now you're into working. And it restarted the app. Ship it. I kind of want to hug you right now. This is beautiful. <laughs> you're about to get a serious beat down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying there, chat room. Exactly. Right? I'm just, I agree, I'm, Lee. Let's I'm ship it. I, I'm ready. The new, the new script's purpose was to remove the dependency on JQ and to use a said to acquire that, that information. Um, can we put the broken script in a git gist for community debug? Actually, it's available. It, it's out there right now on... Um, Not going to loop. It's on the dev branch. Let me... I'm actually going to grab this commit version. Looky, looky, looky. And it's there. It's, it's deployed. There. That's good stuff. Um, so I'm going to navigate directly to this commit. Right, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on my machine, I'm going to grab that file version. Where is it? No, that's your commit. Where's the, this is register? Yeah, with the said, okay. So if I go, do, 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 I wanna go No, look at, don't look at dev, look at. Um, no, no, I wanna get to the raw version of this. Browse the files from here. So now I'm on that tree, and I'm gonna go down into source, mm -hmm. plugin, because if we push this back up, we're gonna lose the pointer there. This, I'm gonna paste this into the chat room. This is the location of the current version of that script. Mm. Cool. So now it's there. Fantastic. Now, see. yeah, so can you put the plug-in on the stream deck? That's the question. And does it work? That's the question. It's not there. Uh, let's look at the folder name. And then? Um, close and restart the app. And then we should take a look at the contents of it. Scroll down to more actions. Mm -hmm. Oh, more actions. No, uh, no, it's not there. Mm -hmm. Close it. Let's look at what's inside the deployed folder that it put out there. And then? We'll uh, figure out where to go next. I'm saying I don't have any exes. Okay. So, Here's the next step. We don't have any EXEs. It's supposed to be, right, when we, when we .NET build, right, we should get an EXE coming out if we... We didn't do a publish, we didn't build. Is that a publish we But it was working, it, it works properly over here on Windows. Right, is, is Carrie still in the chat room? Because I thought... Don't you have to do like a... A publish to oh, get to an exe. Me. Otherwise, you're running a .NET command. Um, does exe have any meaning? No, no, it doesn't. But you're also not getting. I'm not getting a .app file either. I'm not getting anything. I'm getting a deal. Right. I think we do have to. Let me try publish. Just .NET publish. Um, even if you .NET publish. It's going to put it into the so it's going to put it into the debug bin folder in a publish, but how am I getting the exe over there onto on Windows? All right, now you got me all confused here, buddy. It happens. Um, because I was working on this, and even if I go into the the, the obj folder, there's yeah. no uh, exe in there either. It's all DLL. All right, hang on. Let's think this through. Um, is the, pow the PowerShell, is that, that's not running .NET Publish. 
I don't think so. No, it doesn't run a .NET Publish. So when we build inside of Visual Studio, we're not getting, we shouldn't be getting an EXE coming out of that. To get the EXE, you had to add the runtime identifier. Ah. So go back into the CS Proj. I took that out the other day. So put runtime identifier back in there. Yeah, Carrie's right. So, and we can put in multiple runtime identifiers. That's, that's, that's what we're missing to get the EXE. What do I want here? So, um, she's right. We, we had Win10-X64. Right, we do need to make that plural because we're going to put multiple identifiers. X64. Runtime identifiers. There you go. It's the second. Ah, and and is, there, is there a child or? Nope, nope. It, it's a block. It's a string. Okay. And we're going to do Win10-X64, just like Carrie has there in the chat room. And then we're going to put a semi. Right, semi? And then, yeah, thank you, Hugo. Yes. Um, and then I, it's OS, OS X. It's the Darwin. It, it's the Darwin one. I forget what, it's, what it is. Um, Look at my screen. <gasps> I think that's it. Um, Hugo is, is suggesting 10.12-X64. OS X dot 10 dash. That's so small. No, it's not, actually. I'm old. Yeah, OS, uh, you know what? You can just do OS X dash X64. Really? Yeah. Like that? Yep. All right, get a build. See what it goes. See what we get. Come on here. Come on. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Right. Throw me a freaking bone here. And, okay, so there it is. Go back over to Finder. Let's see if we have an executable there. Um, I still see a DLL. As do I. Or do you need to refresh it? Because it actually nuked the folder and rebuilt it. It should have nuked the folder and rebuilt it. I'll do it again. And then let's take a look in our bin debug folder and see if it's there. Starts. Stream Deck it's has here. a min of 10.2. And don't see it there. Don't see it there. And should I just see if it's in here? Yeah, see if it, no, it's not going to be there because you don't have an executable. Yeah. So let's go back over to uh, Visual Studio Code. Let's see if you, what you got in the bin folder. So bin, debug, netcore app 2.2, and it's not there. It's not there. Um, so folks in the chat room are saying, uh, let's drop in the, the explicit yeah. OS X dash, dot, dot 10, 10 dot 12 dash X64. 12 or 13 since I'm on whatever this tiger cat thing is. Sure, do the 13. 13 is kind of unlucky. So am I. <laughs> Today, <laughs> but I'm pumped. All right, build it. All right. Building the things, OK. No, look, look. D don't even look at uh, Stream Deck. Let's look at what's inside your uh, terminal window there, inside Visual Studio Code. Right, look. Um, sample plugin in it output sample plugin DLL. It didn't build the executable. It didn't. You can tell. You can tell. It's right there. DLL. Um, okay. But if I'm on Windows, right? I'm just going to take a peek here. So runtime identifier isn't in here either. I'm just running a quick test on my Windows machine here, which isn't connected. Identifier Win10x64 runtime identifier. Um, stream deck is currently looking at a prompt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm trying to describe it since you're not connected. That's right. Why didn't it? Whatever. You know, you mentioned the touch bar earlier. Yeah, um, yeah. Another thing you can do is uh, on my stream deck, I've actually got, uh, you'll see that on my home screen, these, this bottom row here. Mm -hmm. um, I actually lighten, like this is the brightness of the stream deck. The, and then okay. this is my actual, uh, my, like my individual, like if I do this, you can see I'm turning the volume up and down. Okay. You're um, so I'm actually controlling my volume directly. So you can actually do system level things from your from your. Um, is there a subfolder created in the bin for the OSX build? 
Is there a subfolder created in the bin for the OSX build? No. Nope. No, nope. there is not. So we have it goes straight bin debug yeah. netcore app. I'll 86 it then. We'll try it by hand. Yeah, I don't have uh, the 2.2 SDK on this machine. Now I feel bad. You know it's current. Yeah, I know, but I don't use this machine this machine on a day-to-day -day basis. You know? So we have fast internet here. We do. We so it'll thing. download somewhat quickly. Yeah, let's try .NET Publish OSX 64. Let's let's give that a shot. What Lee's saying? No, no. Let's go ahead. Go ahead. .NET Publish. Go the OSX uh, .10.13 down. OSX. What, is there a switch I have to do there? No. Uh, 13 x 64 like that? Yeah, give that a shot. Mm, uh, wrong folder. Uh, CD stream. No. Do I want to do want to be in the You want to be in the sample plugin. Sample plugin. I am referencing the other project. Just should That's that fine. matter? So okay. the publish should run it. Right, should run the build and publish. Project file does not exist. Um, ah. Yeah, it's a dash R switch. Ah. That, that's how infrequently I run .NET Publish, or I script it and forget about it. OK, now you have the OSX folder, right? So there's your publish. Publish. And we look like we have more than we had. Right, but but now but this is building with a self-contained deployment, right? Yep. This isn't referring uh, relying on the shared folder, uh, shared framework infrastructure. So you you can push all this stuff out, and it will work. But we should yes, we should have a binary without it. So get out of looking at all the system stuff. Go back up and see if there's sample plugin. Just a simple plugin without simple plugin. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what good. We should be deploying. That's a good thing. But that's that's eventually what we need to be able to publish. Mm -hmm. Right? Is everything that's in that folder we want to be able to publish and package as a Stream Deck plugin. And we don't want to do that like mm. on a I guess we want to do it on a runtime. Like how do we plumb in and know which one to do? Well I guess we would know. We, we would know because we're if on. If you're in the show file, you're going to be on Mac, so you know what right. you want to do there. If you're not, you'd be on Win 10 x Your PR ended up being a little crappy. Made a note somewhere in there. Oh. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, I'm going to kick off this install. But it, I thought we were building and getting an EXE on Windows because we're building for the shared framework. The bash script needs to be updated to pull from that OSX directory. Yeah. Um, it does. Which also means then that the PowerShell needs to be updated to pull from the yes. Win 10 folder. It does. I think they could work on that while we're working on this. Um, but I'm not doing a publish. What I need to change this to do a, I mean, I have to change this to do a .NET publish instead of a .NET build. So I have to change the VS Code folder. But we're not doing the publish on PowerShell, right? What are we missing? There's something that we're missing here. Um, like a build switch I'm missing. Yeah, to build with the, with, with the shared framework. Power, the PowerShell is pulling from the Win 10 folder? Stand by. Let me look at that. It is. I can pull that up. Um, I see it pulling from bin debug net core app 2.2. I might have changed that. No, this is the only the only folks that have touched this are myself and Carrie. I might have changed that at some point. Uh, let's try it. But still, the All build right. has to change, which I can do that. So I'm going to pull from. I'm going to change this. Gracious me. So I want to change. Yeah, we did get the EXE on the build. Didn't have to publish. Where's the? Um, the tool chain in, on OSX, it, while it isn't as fancy, should work. They're all using the yeah. same thing. They're all using the same. It's all using .NET. So it should work. So we are using runtime identifiers. Right. Um, but when we build for that shared framework, 
we should get the appropriate exe coming out the other side. <coughs> when we sit, because we said output type exe. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing this. And now what I'm going to do here is go into my tasks. And I've got build. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of feel like that would... Wait, so when we run .NET build, you can specify the runtime at that point. Let's specify the runtime. And I would do that. VS Code and VS Mac doesn't package for the platform, but VS Windows does. Yeah. And Lee, I think, you're, I think that's what we just found here. We should be using a dash R with the build okay. so that we get it building appropriately for this platform, which makes me wonder about the launch settings JSON. No, that's not it. Right, somewhere in our in our application here, it's it's being defined that when you build, pass in that dash yeah. R, I think. Yep. So that it does build for. Um, you can .NET publish. You you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree, Auth Zero, Bobby. We shouldn't have to specify all the way down to OSX thirteen dot. We should be able to just say OSX dash x64 and it'll figure it out. Like this. Uh, put a dash in there. Sorry. There you go. And let me 86 that guy just to be. So one time OCD. flag makes it standalone. Um, oh, man. It's terribly unfortunate. Let me let that build here. Windows. It's odd that it, so should I add a dash R? Is that what everybody's saying? I don't. That was one suggesti suggestion, but on Windows, um, really, Carrie, it, it, we are adding the Win 10 X64 into the PowerShell. We are. PS script root. I didn't see that. I think I might have taken that out at one point when I was working on the No, you didn't because the only folks that have touched this are myself and Carrie. Okay. I don't see it here. I don't get that. It is in the PowerShell. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. I'm you know what I'm going to try first, though? Please. I am going to do this. I'm going to back this out. Help so me, Obi Wan Brady. You're so, since we're help. doing the .NET publish dash R OSX here, yes, I'm going to do that. Let's see if we get the build. We got the build. That's going to open. Mm -hmm. We're happy there. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do, just for giggles, just this is not, you know, obviously recommended, but and we have nothing in here. You're just going to copy it. I'm in. just going to copy it in there because I just yeah. want to see if we're money from this point on. I want to reveal in Finder, um, and then I'm just going to do. Yeah, Carrie, I'm looking at the master here on Git, GitHub, and I do not see the Win 10 in here. See, that's one. Did you see that? Go back. Yeah. Oh, it was in there. That's and, what I said. I told you. You pulled it. I told you. All right. We need to roll you back, buddy. Yeah. Um, Slow your roll. All right. So that's I've right. copied that in there, and now I'm just going to pop open the Stream Deck. So we got it open. More actions. Where is the yellow? What? Oh, for are you talking? Are you referring to Bokyo? Are you asking about uh, here? I didn't. We did blue, orange, and purple. And uh, yeah, where's Rainbow Face? Right here, buddy. I, I told him he should have stripped it with you know peroxide or something first. He had some excuse. Hair doesn't. This is so. This is like three days in now because we did it. We actually did this on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's faded a little bit. There's a great picture or two up on up on Twitter. Uh, up on my Instagram, there's a, a couple pictures. It wasn't that bright even on Wednesday, but it was still pretty rainbowy. I mean, like, All right. pull up the where's the picture of you, the, the 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 rainbow rainbow. That's what I was expecting. So, so this is sorted by most popular alphabetically. Let's go and installed. It, yeah, it isn't showing up too well on stream. Up. So yeah, it looks like you clobbered my PowerShell here. All right. We have spent an hour. a better part of an hour here just futzing around with just getting this to copy properly. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Um, let's. 
I'll install PowerShell. Call it again. Roll back. Um, um, seriously, let's roll back these changes that were made to the PowerShell script. Carrie's updates that she had here were working on the PowerShell. Your stuff for the Bash script looks like it's working, except for this publish, mm -hmm. this getting it to build and output mm -hmm. the, the file as a as a appropriate command there. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing we're missing there, that's a little odd. I could work with the team today and see if I can figure out what's going on there. All right. Our so build we, master sits next to me. We know how to get through that. Yeah. Copy and deploy the sample plugin. Let's make sure it works on the on the device. We, we'll make this, yeah, let's revisit this later. Yeah, that's fine. We've absolutely uh, killed this. The quality of the audio of the guy on the left is awful. Sorry. Is that? Positioning. No, I'm left, dude. Stage left. Um, hey, Golnaz, how's my audio over there? Yeah, the bearded I'm... guy's audio. My audio's bad? Really? I'm, yeah, I'm peeking. I'm looking good here. Huh. Weird. So, hey, Moz. Hello, Maz. hello. Yeah, I just clipped it. I purposely clipped a little bit louder. Hmm. Um, hmm. Let me... Let me get going us. No, no, okay. Copy, get that thing running. Put it on the, put your plugin on the stream deck. You just re restart the applets. Get that working. Okay, okay. So I put, I, what I've done is I've copied it in. So this is all the stuff that just happened with .NET Publish. Yes. So now I'm going to open the stream deck. I don't see it down in here in custom. I want to hit more actions. No, you're not going to see it. I don't see it. So I still don't even see it like in the more actions guy either. So it's like it doesn't see that it's there. Okay. Um, and it's not popping up. Mm -mm. Is it named correctly in the manifest? There's a good question from Drago, right? That Those things need to be lined up. These are good questions. Uh, for let's in see order the for manifest. the stream deck to load it. Close this source. Let me get rid of my this window. Uh, where's my manifest? manifest? Manifest JSON. There we go. Okay. Com C sharp for its sample plugin dot action. That's right. Okay. Um, so those things are fine. Scroll up. Scroll up. So com C sharp for its sample plugin with a capital P dot action. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac is bad. Uh, off topic, I've been working on a thing that pulls uh, the list of live programming streams from Twitch. I'm not number one? Oh no. What can we do to get there? Code path Mac. What's code path Mac? Ow! Ow! Code path Mac, stream deck underscore first, down there on line 20. That should be just sample plugin. And that's how it knows how to execute Where, it. This? Line 20. Line 20. Oh. Oh, wait. And Bazinga. Save it, publish it, copy that manifest JSON over to the folder and okay. restart the app. Let me see if I can do that easily. That's a win. Yeah. Should I'm be. just going to. We're just going to drag and drop to it. And we will refigure out these scripts later. We've wasted so much time on Sorry, this. Sorry, everyone. Interloop is hard. Um, Source, stream deck, sample plugin, manifest JSON. Yeah. Place. Oh, let, me, let me reboot the. It's rebooted or it's dead. Yep. Launch the app. <gasps> All right, there it is. Now we got sample plugin because it found the exe. Fantastic. Drag and drop that onto one of your things, one of your doodads. There we go. Hit the button, Frank. Is that it? All right. So, so let's let's that's think a, through this. That's ahead. So now we're getting. You can't see it on the screen. Hey, Carrie. Thank you for that kind cheer. You can't see it on the screen but it's trying to attach the debugger. It has that debugger launch statement in, in there when we build for debug mode. Mm -hmm. It can't attach the debugger, mm -hmm. so it's erroring out. Mm -hmm. 
It's also trying to set up a log file in the temp folder. Can you look in your... Oh, no, it's trying to write it in that sample plugin folder. Can you look in the sample plugin folder? Go back to your finder. Is there a log folder now in there? No. Nope. No. It would have been up top. Um, in the logs. Okay, so... What it should, what it is trying to do, and you should see Serilog in there. There it is. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's, it's trying to start up a Serilog so that it can write a file that has here I'm building and starting to listen to and work with the Stream Deck. Yep. So this is coming back to a point that you made to me over the phone about a week or so ago. We need to make sure that that is cross-platform and does work for both Mac and Windows because we've seen this working quite nicely on Windows, mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, probably didn't get that far because you moved the debugger attach right to the start, probably before the logger even. So th the debugger is trying to attach. It should be trying to launch. Um, let's look at your code in program CS. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, so that's the get logger factory. This is trying to configure the logger. Mm -hmm. And it's getting a JSON file, app settings JSON. We have that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Add Sarah log, plugin started. All right. Where's it trying to write the log file to? Scroll back up there. Hey, Alan Nitro. Um, set current directory to the location of the executing assembly. So that should be mm -hmm. the current folder. Okay. Um, so scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Um, so there's the debugger launch. It's right at the top, and it's before the logger attach. Yep. So, oof. we're using the get logger factory, <coughs> and it's configuration manager initialize, set the plugin. So right now, we don't know where this is bombing out on the Mac. Right. Where it, it's, it's biting it. Yeah. Um, rebuild with a .NET publish release. Um, if we do that, it will prevent the debug from running. Which will, which will definitely impact our, I mean, it doesn't help us with the inner loop, but it definitely proves that, that we're works. building on a Mac and we're working. Which right. Which I think is kind of a plus. All right, let's do that. Okay. Go for um, it. Um, so we'll do that. So we're going to .NET build with a, with a release configuration. So that's dash, uh, right, the dash R, we need dash C release, right? Like that? Yeah. Um... And now, what I will do is go back to Finder. Right. Read, delete all those. And then um, redeploy. And then, uh, then release that core app 2 06. That doesn't. That's fine. That's fine. I'll right. Publish. Do we have the, the sa yep, sample plugins in there? Good. See, yeah, what's good interesting is I almost want to see now we're building and we've got this. I wonder if it was a debug thing. Since I was in debug, I didn't get the exe. Clean the folder and rebuild. Prove it. So, what folder do you have set in the app settings for Serilog? Is it with a backslash? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a real good question. It, it builds the exe on release. Aha! Uh -huh. I wonder if it builds it on the bug too, and we just didn't notice that. It actually the so the path in app settings is a forward slash. Which is okay. That's fine. It wor that'll work on both. Okay. Um, yep. So go ahead. Let's deploy. Okay. So I've done the I've done the publish. Right. You ran publish. Yeah. And you had the exe. Okay. So punch it in there. Maybe change app settings JSON to point to console only. I'm not opposed to that, but I'm j I just want to make sure the Mac is running here. Oops. Yep, let's get over to Visual Studio. I just blew it up. <laughs> um, Better okay, restart okay. the stream deck. Yeah. That's fine. So here's this. No, button's not counting. Button's not counting. So we're not getting there. Uh, for Sarah Lock Syncs, but if everything is forward slash, it should be fine. It should be, yes. Mm -hmm. Keyword, should be. Should be. Mm -hmm. 
want this to be a Windows only thing. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be. That's. I think what we're dealing with here, just so everybody in the in, in the chat room, it's not that it's not that Mac is bad. It's not that .NET Core is bad. It's that it's that we're we're kind of a uh, you know. I guess I can put it this way, and, and this is going to sound contentious, but leading is difficult. You know, like like doing something the first time is always kind of challenging. And, sure. And I don't think anybody, at least nobody I know, has been able to make .NET Core or, or even tried to make .NET Core work with an Elgato on a Mac. So this is kind of you know new area, and and we're not you know let's be let's be growth oriented. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. We can get there. Um, we can cross this bridge. So if I. Xplat is hard. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yes. And interlooping the Xplat is is. Oof. So I'm here on Windows, just doing .NET build. I get DLLs coming out. But if I do .NET build uh, dash R Win 10 X64, I still get DLLs coming out. Weird. True, Osiro Bobby. Check for the error log. Oh, oh no, I got the exe. Hang so on. he says check for the error log when it's when it's not running. Let me, let me see if we actually. Oh oh. We got locked. Genius. Okay, so Genius. what's in there? So what's in there? <laughs> what's in there? Plug in started. Don't make me. Don't make me. Uh. So it started. All right. Um, I'm just .NET building over here and seeing what happens. Um, You're doing a build too. To see what that's building and giving me Win 1064 just by doing .NET build. Just by doing .NET build. But when I do .NET build over there on the Mac, when you do .NET build, it isn't giving you the OS X one. It's true. I'm kind of wondering. Uh, let me do this. And you're just doing it directly from command line, .NET build. Yeah. Period. Okay. Let's do that. But I only have the one runtime identifier right now. I've got two. Right. Let's see what happens. Does it give you both? No. I just get. I get debug netcore app and no exe. Okay. Now I'm what now I'm gonna do one other different thing. I'm gonna do .NET build dash C release. So what do we get with both? I'm gonna try that right now. I'm gonna put in both and let me rebuild. Same thing with release. I don't even get an XC when I do a .NET build with release. All right, you got something messed up over there is what you got. I just did a .NET build. And you get an XC. I got an XC. Okay, I have to stand up. Yeah. Keep better. my hours. Keep my, counting my steps. Oh, please. You're not keeping your steps. Yes, I am. Come on now. Do it! Maybe do runtime identifier single and just have OS X 64. Failed to retrieve information about OS X X64. Interesting. That's a little weird. Seems like it should just dodge it. You know? Like, oh, this isn't me. I want to look in the object. If I specify 10.2, no, it still doesn't go. So on, uh, I'm not even getting restoring the and finding the runtime identifier on my machine. Hmm. So on when on Windows looking for. So on Windows when you add the OS X X64, it just freaks out. Freaks out. Oh. This machine. What does it say? It's wonderful. What do we got here? On Brady's. Did we make it plural on Windows? Yes, we did. Yep. Yep. Actually, hang on. It looks like I got bumped off the network. Let's try it. So, 
Let's see if I get recommended. Let's just do OS64, OS X64 on Brady's machine. Um, so let me go ahead. I'm just being OCD here, but I want to go ahead and 86 everything that I've got. There we go. Now I'm working. I got bumped off the network, so that's why so I was getting... So I don't know what's up. So I've only got one runtime identifier now. It's OS X-64, X64. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a .NET build. Uh, I'm going to do both. I'm going to do debug and release. So I'll do a .NET build, which implies debug. And now I'm going to do, and it starts. I love how that works. It's beautiful. And now I'll do a release. And if I go into bin, debug, nope. I just get netcore app 2.2. No, because it's got multiple, it, when I have multiple identifiers, it only, it gives me, yeah. Does it give I you sub-zero? I don't get the EXE. It doesn't give me the subfolders for each one. It doesn't give you the subfolders when you have multiples. Right. It, but it does give you the, it does give you the EXE mm -hmm. when you do a build or a publish. It gives me the EXE when I only do a publish. I'm... This machine's having problems. Oh, I see. Make Brady sing singular. I got it. Yeah. Sorry. That's not what I meant. Sorry. So, yeah, if you force that to just runtime identifier and then .NET build, you're going to get it building properly for just that. Right? So now go back into debug OS X64 and uh -huh. sample plugin. So we're running into the issue here now. My audio clicks dropouts every now and again. Uh, interesting. I'm gonna. When is Ra Rainbow Beard happened yesterday, dude? Hang on. So, it, so we're, what we're seeing then is runtime identifier that's singular. Let's compile gives us the exe. Otherwise, we're not getting. Mm, and runtime identifiers doesn't. And when I and when I reopen it, I'm kind of wondering what I get now. If I go over here, it it didn't copy everything. It didn't copy sure, everything because, because you now it's need a to different folder. Into yeah. OS X 64. Yep. Let me see. Let me see. I'm not sure, Robert. I don't know if I'd call this a bug, as much as we need to. That's what I was saying earlier. It's uncharted territory. Yeah. Yeah. So pending multiple in the singular runtime identifier takes a dump. Nothing in there. Well, all right, that's your copy process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your script. Oh, right, is it copying from the OS X? Oh, I, I didn't need to publish. Sorry. Right, yeah. There we go. Get rid of that. Now copy. Now run it. Yep. I'm going to see if we can do check into this audio here real that's quick. Fine. And now we got it. Now it's in there. Now this is good. I've only got the, <clears throat> so uh, I think CPIET suggested it. We singularized a runtime identifier. I changed it to OSX-64. I did a build, and now I have the XE, and when it opens up, I actually get the plug-in. So let me just go ahead and do a full inner loop on this, just to totally clean ourselves, uh, make sure this is working, uh, clean the environment out, and make sure everything is cool. Let me check my, is, how's my audio? Can you hear me here? Hello? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So I've deleted the folder altogether, and yeah. I'm just going to open up the Stream Deck. Okay. So I've got Stream Deck open, and you'll see down here I have analog clock encounter. So it's not deployed so yet. So it's not deployed yet. Okay. I'm going to leave it running. Okay. And I'm going to pop out to here so you can kind of see my, my DERS. Sure. I'll do a quick build. All right. And I'm going to flip real quick. So... See that I flip over here. There's my directory. It starts open, and there we it is. We started the app. It's there. It's there. Fantastic. And Can if you put I, it out, and does the all right. So we're getting we're an getting, error yeah. still over there. How's the? Is there anything in the log now? That's a great question. Let me check the logs. Okay. Here we go. Over to no logs. Okay. So this time we didn't get the log folder created. Okay. Um, we're getting closer. Yeah. So. What I want to do now is actually stop my Stream Deck one more time. Okay. And I'm just kind of wondering, like, since we got that plugin started log command that one time, I'm kind of wondering. Uh oh, that wasn't good. I opened up the snipping tool, which means I opened up my. I, so I'll do Stream Deck one more time here. I kind of 
agree, Carrie, is the debugger launch messing things up? I think it might be. Okay. I definitely think it might be because we're not attached. I, and I think Knight has it right here. For If we have multiple run times, you need to specify dash dash run yeah. time, the dash R. Okay, so we would need to do that in our, in our files, if you will. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, that's a good, that, that's good feedback. We could probably do that here. So what that would imply is if we back this up and we do, the, we do both runtime identifiers. So I've got my runtime identifier right here. I've got both of these set. And remember that what I'm building from is my uh, uh, VS Code folders launch command or my task command. So I'm going to go here, open this guy up, and I think I have an args that I can use. And what is it? Dash dash. Dash R. Just dash R. Dash uh, one R. R. Yeah, one dash, one R, and then space. Uh, mm, yeah. OSX. Um, thanks so much for joining us, Lee. Yep, video will be available a little bit later today mm -hmm. over on YouTube. Okay, so now we've got the args. We've got multiple identifiers set up. I don't have any banner obj in here, so we'll have a totally clean build. The stream deck is not running. That's okay. Um, I'll do a build now and cross fingers. Go ahead. But th so that'll get you. Go ahead. Oh. Unknown command dot net build dash r. Huh? That's not right. Um, runtime? Do dash dash runtime. Uh, like this? Hanging off from this one build. Fish shell? No. Yes. Really? Okay. That didn't work. Th those args are outside of what's being executed for some reason. They are. Oh, whoops. That was an accident. That was an accident. Dump that, dump those args and just attach dash R OSX X64 up there. Up here? Uh, on the command. Oh, okay, I got it. Just like that. Well, put build before the, the argument. Excuse me, Jeff. There. What's this? Give it a shot. I don't know the format of this file, but that looks better. Okay. Cool. Started. Right there. There's the, the doodad, and you press the button, and still well, get we have here. to take out the okay. right. Right. So let's reach into program CS, mm -hmm. and let's just comment out the debugger attached. Mm-hmm. Right there, 47 through 56. Just comment that whole thing. Do this. No, the log file's working. The log file worked. So like that? Yeah. Any more debuggers in there? No, no, that's the only one. Okay. We've got the full inner loop now, other than the debug part, which is good. So that's going to open. Let me go to the directory. There's our log. Yep. See, so... so so, uh, who was it? Uh, it's not blowing Drake, up anymore. It's, it's not, not blowing, blowing up, up. That's good. But it's not counting. And all it's saying is plug in started. Okay. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. This is good. And we don't. And where's the code that runs whenever, some, whenever I push a button? Just so I could like, so do some more logging. So, if you go to. Well, uh, hang on. Let's let's make sure. Right. So it's an initialized plugin. Where's it actually? Oh, it, it's the top logger said plugin started. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look at my sample plugin. It, uh, Carrie has an interesting idea. Try removing it as a button and putting a new one on there. So go back over to the Stream Deck app. Yes, sir. You see how many times I've done that today? Oh, yeah. So remove that and re-add it. So delete it and then drag another one on from the tray on the right. Like there? Yeah, yeah. No, that one's not working for no, you. Not working. Um, okay. So we've done that in the software, and that didn't change anything in the behavior. 
So it, so the plugin started as just entry from that top. Mm -hmm. You're not getting to the connection actually happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, Carrie. Boo. All right. <laughs> um, let's go. Let's do this. That clock is nowhere near right. Anyways. No. Um, I mean, so let's go. Is that like a Hawaiian tone? I, no, it's, it might be, but it's not. Um, all right, so go back into the program CS. Mm -hmm. um, and it should be passing off. So inside main, this is where it kicks up. It starts a logger factory, which we should have. Connection manager initialized, my sample plugin, start async, source token. Mm -hmm. So let's go into this. And if it has a problem, it's going to throw an error down here. Yep. On 74. So we're not But we don't have that. any logs, so that's yeah. good. We don't have any logs on the air. All we have is that it started. Mm -hmm. So let's go into start async. Go into start async. Go to definition. So this is actually starting. This the, is in the connection manager. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is inside the library starting this. Let's go over to. Go into the run task here. Okay. Uh, what? Now look at initialize. Go to initialize. Right here. Down a little bit. Down. Keep going. Keep going. So right here is where it's trying to initialize and connect. Okay. Do um, a log here. We've done it. Well, it created a logger called Connection Manager. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, let's go to the run method. There's a method called run. I don't know where that is. Right here. Okay. Right so it's trying to connect right there on line 96. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, did it connect? So after, let's put a line between 96 and 97, and uh, yes, add some more logging statements. Oh. Right, so yeah, logger. Log info connected to this uh, to the stream deck. Oh, and then put another log after ninety eight registered with this with the stream deck. Because what the stream deck is looking for is it's looking for you to connect into the WebSocket. It sends back a little piece of information that says you need to register as a plugin, and here's the information about that registration that I expect from you. If if you behave properly, you should send back exactly what the stream deck application is requesting. And honestly, at some point, it might have been over here in my launch. I was reading the documentation, and I was trying to do things like. Uh, feed it uh, the parameters like which port and everything, and then I realized it's probably this thing that's calling the plugin that's passing it the port. And it's, I don't need to do all that. Mr. Magoo is asking for a, a log on line 95, so we know that it's even getting into this method. I that's not bad. That. Sure. Uh, uh, in run. Sure. Sure. Got it. And then if we can get the uh, node emulator running, you have a PR that outputs all communication back and forth. Woo! That's cool. This is happy. Okay. Give it a shot. Pi yeah. uh, let's let's hit the inner loop here and see if we can get this. The build. So we shouldn't have to actually do anything to move it around. We should be able to just hit the button here and see if it does anything. All right. It's still not doing anything. Now let's open the lock. L log. Oh, that's wrong. All right, connected and registered. Okay, good. more information and good information to have too. Very good. So, if we go back over to to the code, we know now where it, that it's gotten that far. Oh. All right. So now it should be listening for the socket. Should be. I want to do more logging. Go for it. Uh, switch. I don't want to put it in there. So it's trying to get a message off of the socket at this point. Socket state. I'm being lazy. Uh, socket state. Well, that's going to fire all the time. Oh, yeah. You don't want it in there. Because that's just pumping. Right. Okay, yeah, you, want it, right. you want it down in here when, after it gets a message. Get message as string. So put it right in there. Put an info. 
Okay. Got got message from from oh. the socket. Uh, Thomas Bra, what is the point of this stream in general? What uh, so what we're trying to do is we are um, we're putting together a, a plugin. We're putting together a framework so that you can build plugins for the Elgato Stream Deck using C Sharp, using F Sharp, VB, whatever .NET Core compatible language you'd like on both Mac and Windows. And my colleague Brady here is working on his Mac with Visual Studio Code. And we're trying to build this real, what we call the tight inner loop, so that when you say build, it builds your plugin, puts it onto the Stream Deck in debug mode, and then we can get some information back from it so that as developers, if we're building something really complex for the Stream Deck to be able to do, we can get a little bit of information about what's happening. And, ooh, this is good. All right, so in our new log file that Brady just opened here, check out, check out all the Unicode. <laughs> That's a lot of Unicode. <laughs> wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um, uh, That's a lot of junk is what that that's is. That's Cray Toms. But so, um, so to Thomas, uh, not a problem. The, the end goal that we want here is for, for folks who are .NET developers, whether you're using Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or whatever your favorite text editor might be, we want you to be able to go to the command line and say .NET new Stream Deck plugin mm -hmm. and get a nice template. And, and we're working on this sample plugin folder. This is what's going to be our canonical example that we extract our template from. We mm -hmm. build our template out of what this thing is. But we want you to have, just like you saw with Brady, he just said build here on in Visual Studio Code, just like that. And it's running the .NET build at the command line and putting it onto the Stream Deck device. And there's the, the app running right there. And write out some log information, be able, for us as developers, have that configuration file so we can set up whatever log info we want. What did you do? Now, I moved it. This is interesting. I moved it to in here, um, and I'm not getting anything here. So, like, I was trying to actually get the, like, see the payload, but see, yeah. we're not getting anything at that point. So, it's almost like this method here, like, the run method is not, it's not getting any events. It's not getting events that I'm sending it. Interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, and uh, right, this comes back to we've configured logging. So, us as developers, imagine if you were having to write this and figure out all this stuff on your own as you're trying to actually be productive and write a plugin that connects to whatever. Response right. Response right. Yeah. Response right. Response right. <laughs> so we're 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 going to add this logging information, and we'll probably commit your changes to Connection Manager here because we're adding log information. This is something that all of us are going to want to know when, when you dial up the logging, right? When you want more than just errors logged, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and you're trying to do some rich debugging experience here. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy we're finally getting to something productive here. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. It's hard. Code is hard. Code's hard. So, so basically, we, we only get to, like, I mean, the closest we get to doing anything legit is here. Okay. Um, the point where we get here, what it looks like is happening, if I were to move this underneath, mm -hmm. and uh, the part I don't understand is we got Jason up here, and well, then when I moved it to under here, it, uh, So it stopped because, take a look at line 118, if the JSON string starts with the, the WAC zero. Right. Right? It ignores. It says, well, this isn't really something. Do we need to specify encoding of the message received? Drega, I think you're on to something here. And so. um, that might be our challenge because when we were on Windows, we were getting UTF 8. There it is. Well, you see that on line 217 there. So the question is, are you getting the same encoding coming back? Hmm. So, Drega, you're, I think you're on to something. What do you think? Um, what else would it be? Would it be UTF-16? I try ASCII. Throw ASCII in there. And, right, I was assuming UTF, but uh, let's see if ASCII does it. So well, there is no headers. We're on a web socket. It's just raw messages coming across. We aren't, we don't have any headers. You got that right. So... Um. Don't know. 
It's not, it's not your traditional HTTP protocol. What, no, right, this isn't a web server. Good point, Oops. Brady. This isn't a web server. This is literally a web socket opening, and we're connecting to it and passing messages asynchronously back and forth. Yeah. And listening and responding appropriately. And, and for folks who've wondered why we don't do this with SignalR, um, like we, we, we had a conversation about this. This was a, uh, here's a tip. If you ever have an opportunity to have a 2 a.m. conversation with David Fowler, don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> David there. Fowler is, is, um, is one of the lead engineers on .NET. He's an architect. Okay. Ar oh, yeah. my gosh. Principal architect. Okay. There um, you go. Yes. So uh, Dave, David has a, a, a lot of great ideas and, and a lot of awesome opinions. And uh, Jeff hit me up one night and he goes, and I have to embarrass you, I apologize. You, you know your friends, they pick on you. Inconceivable! Yeah, right. Um, so I, I, I asked David, I said, I know the answer to this question. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, Jeff, Jeff asked me, I had to say it was you. Uh, Jeff asked me, so we have this thing, it runs a web sockets, uh, can't we just slap SignalR on top of it? Yeah. And I said, I know what you're going to say, SignalR bang equals web sockets, mm -hmm. you know, not equal to. Um, and he said, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. He goes, remember, WebSockets is the, is the connection, uh, it's the pipe yep. over which your protocol runs. Okay, yep. so the, the Elgato folks, they created a Stream Deck protocol. Yes. And their transport mechanism is WebSockets. Yes. Okay, so they're, 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 they're using their protocol over the, over the WebSocket comm layer. So David had a good, a good point. He said SignalR has a, yeah, I know he's wrong, but hear him. Well, that's what he said. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah, exactly. But he knew. He knew. Um, we've, okay. asked, we've been asked this question many, many times. We get this question issues a lot. Wait, wait, let, me, let me explain something to you. Please explain uh, something to exactly. me. So, so, what, what, so what David said is, remember, the SignalR you know, hub protocol is also a protocol. If you wanted to, you could learn the Stream Deck protocol, and then you could you know, get messages off of the WebSocket, and then you could map those messages over to the SignalR. So uh, protocol. We could build a Stream Deck protocol. Mapper to the SignalR protocol. That's which is a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Okay. So did this work? Did you build and, and redeploy here? What I do we got? I built. What do we got? What do we got? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's why everybody knows because they keep asking that. And I just saw Patch and Switch walk in. They're they're getting ready for their show here starting. Oh, let me let me actually very soon. Okay, so the button still isn't working. We're not getting anything out, but Look at the information we're getting now. Horrified. So, okay, hang on. Let, let's let's think this. Yeah, think it through. Through. So, that's an encoding thing right there, right? Stream Decker. No, no. Yeah. See, that's what we're getting. We're getting those. <clears throat> each one of these little. You see this tiny no, little. No, no, you got it. Look, 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 look. Line yeah. sixteen. Yeah. Which one I pushed, which is exactly where it is. It's on row one, it's on the second row, and it's in yes. the first column. Yes. So if I were to move it over, we would see that it's indeed, we're money here. But right. we don't know what all this is. No, we don't know what that is. It's outputting more goo. Um, that's really just data information, but it's a lot of heavy lifting. We need lots of testing and documentation. The whole protocol is not a web app or plugin. Agreed. Right. Agreed. Agreed. We Agreed. will do that. Versus acting directly with this. Okay. So... You changed that to ASCII, and we've got information coming now. Yep. So it's not detecting the stream terminating character. I think you're right, Hugo. Hmm. Interesting. That's weird. I wonder what that. I guess we'd have to find out what that, what this is. So it looks like a massive. I mean, no, like, it's an it's an empty, right? It's empty. It's empty packets coming off we, of. If we, the scroll, if we scroll through all that, those are packs coming from the WebSocket very fast, and then there's another message. Yeah, and it's the size of the byte array, the, and the byte array is 64K. And there we go. There's another one. Yeah. So, huh. um, all right. We've gotten somewhere. We've gotten somewhere. We, and right here, somewhere where we've found a difference in behavior between Mac and Windows of the Stream Deck. Init byte array to zero. Hmm. Um, so you have to zero out the byte array first. No, the byte array is being right when you look at the get message method. Right, so get message as string on 116. We create a new byte array. It's empty at that point. We say new byte there on line 216. No, you've allocated. Oh, and we allocated them as zeros. Right, so it should be empty. 
on that segment. So the byte array is empty when it's declared on 216. We allocate for the full length zeros there. And then we load up into it. Carriage return versus line feed. Um, and changing this did nothing. No. All right. That's unfortunate. Why is the auto mod popping up over there? Auto mod? Auto mod's popping up over here. I don't know if that is. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm like disconnected again. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what to do with this one, but we, we probably can make a little patch and switch. But no, no, patch and switch are going live over in a, over in a different oh, studio. Oh, they're different. Here. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and sure we, will, um, we will probably raid them in a little bit here. Hmm. So Knight 0323 is asking, isn't that the same output as the UTF-8 encoding? And for it some was. reason, the auto mod is capturing that, and I can't get to it. OK, so I did a build, changed the Unicode, did a build, stream deck opens. Push the button. Push the buttons. Let's take a look Push at that logic file. Okay. So we should see some button press events. So there's our log file. There it is, brand new, just the way mom used to make it. Whoa! Dude! That was unexpected. Inconceivable! But there's more, there's junk in there. It's not encoding and decoding properly. But when we had it as ASCII or UTF, UTF-8, it didn't come through at all. No, it did. We had a payload. We had a payload. We did get the, the information. Go back to UTF-8. Surely. Did it ever bother you that the default encoding of the uh, XML serializer was uh, 16? Did that ever cause you any problems? Yes. Oh my gosh, back in the day, the default encoding of XML serializer, yes, was 16. Hugo, that might not be a bad one to try either. Just put the default encoder on there. You know, the, reason I, it picks it off. You know, the reason I came to work here was to yell at that, yell at that person. I, have, I haven't found them yet. Still waiting. Still waiting? Now we're going to get, yeah. Default. So let's try, like Hugo's suggestion, go for encoding.default. Oh. What, what default is it? Is it my default or is it Damien's default? The system can figure the default. Pick the television. Let's see. Do you need to learn programming to make a game? Asks the King98000. Yes, you do. Yes. Gaming is hard. Get, building a game is very hard. You also need to learn physics and math. Yes. And graphic design. For, for figuring out how to do collisions, how to do arc, right? You shoot a bullet and you want to see it fall over, that's going to take a little bit of work, those types of things. The, the dumbest I ever felt was when I worked at a poker. Uh, we, we used to make digital hold'em tables. And mm -hmm. It was all people doing at the time XNA, uh, Xbox level coding. Yeah, yeah. Mind boggling. Mm. All right, so we're still getting those zeros popping out, but did we actually get the payload coming through? Also? We got the did payload, get, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's, um, what do we have here? Doesn't receive async, return a WebSocket receive result, which tells you how many bytes were received, then you can do get string across that. Um, does it? Hang on. So socket receive async, what comes back off of that on line 218? Right, that returns a WebSocket receive result. So what's in that? Oh. Count. Ooh. So if we did look at the count and we we explored that, right, and we trimmed the, the string appropriately as um, Fossils is suggesting, Right, so, uh, so we do var uh, real JSON, real string, real message. When we do the get string on the buffer, can't we l specify the size on? That's what I'm doing. Result count? Nah. No, 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 no. Down on, on line 220 where it says 
JSON string encoding default get string. I believe you can specify the length there after buffer. Uh, uh -huh. oh no. I thought there was a... Yes, you're right. There you go. So the index is zero, and then the length is going to be result.count. Have we added value today, Jeff? Have we added value today? Let me go get a microphone and add some value. You know, um, you know that was my demo, right? That was your demo, <laughs> and the microphone died. And I had nothing to do with the microphone. Died. That was at build. Those of you that are wondering what we're talking about, is we're making a reference to build 2018. Um, I was so exhausted that day. <laughs> That's good stuff. Fantastic. That it f oh, man. Okay, so that's an improvement on that's code. Beautiful. Good call. Beautiful. Who suggested that? Yeah. Who suggested that in the... We should give them a subscription. Just kidding. That to was them. Fossil, so who's suggesting that. Um, Massive happy. And the king, that, that's not... That isn't too far off the topic. There we go. Robert Tables with a cheer. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to stage that and commit it. Yeah. Uh, so we had to, we added some nice logging in there. It still isn't triggering the event and counting on the counter. But we've added some, I think, valuable logging. Um, certainly trimming the size of those packets is going to make things a bit easier. Um, and we finally, need to, progress. And we yeah. need to do this one. I'll stage this one. I don't feel... I can stage that one too. I'm going to stage these two as well. Um, yeah. I don't want it to. I don't want to stage that yet. No. Because we want to debug. Um, I want to stage that. Okay. Because that's a new build command for folks on a Mac. I don't want to do this one. I don't. Well, yeah, I guess I do. Um, yes, we need I'll that. Do that. Uh, that manifest stage changes updated. Yes. And uh, more updates. Yeah, Sushinator, I, there were there was some clipping. We tried adjusting it a little bit here, but I, I think we're in a better place. So while we're wrapping up, we're checking everything in. We're making our commits. Let's uh, let's play the funky Mario music. There we go. Um, as we wind down, so we've committed all that stuff out to GitHub. We figured out some issues that we had here around the build, the deploy process on a Mac, it's clearly not equal and identical to what's going on on Windows. But I think we've, we've made some steps here that bring it level without impacting the Windows experience. I think, I think we've made some progress, even though we struggled for a bit with mm -hmm. that script. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a better place. There's a couple other pull requests out there to help with the README. Um, and I, I want to really get into building some unit tests for this at some point. But we're in a place now where I think it's better on on a Mac. I think we need to call it a day here, dude. Fine with that, dude. Fantastic. Uh, this video will be available later today over on my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash C Sharp Fritz. And if I'm right, our friends Patch and Switch should be coming online here any minute. Golden as is Patch are Patch and Switch about ready to go? Are they started? Are they doing their thing? Are they making things happen? I don't see them live out here on, on the Twitches. Are they going? Are they doing their thing? Joey! Rick! Come on, buddy! Do we got something happening over there? Let's let them know. I think it would be great to raid them. I, and Ardalis is starting too. And, yep, our friend Ardalis is starting as well. But uh, I want to see if we could raid over to Patch... They're live at Patch and Switch. Let me see here. Come on, there they are. Here's what I want to do. Friends, gear up your .NET bot emotes. Let them know, let me turn this off. Let them know you're coming. I'm gonna drop a message in their chat right now. Incoming raid. Check it out. Let's uh, send folks over there. We're gonna raid, patch, and switch. Thanks for having me on the show today. Thank you, Brady, I really appreciate it. We, uh, we got somewhere, and this is the Mac is definitely something we weren't paying attention to properly mm -hmm. and giving it that level of respect. Mm -hmm. So for everybody in the chat room, if you want to go over and check out Patch and Switch, stay right there. Everybody will be magically transported, whisked by the power of Twitch over there. Have your .NET bots ready. Say hello to them, and I will be back on Sunday, and we'll tidy up a little bit more of this. All right? Take care, everybody. Say hello to, jo uh, to Joey for me when you get there. See ya. Take care.